Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Hulu YouTube channel. And we thank you very much for being part of this. We are those people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator are good for all time. They have been part of a test of time, and they have passed the test of time. And it is something that we should apply to our lives, and to our hearts, and to our families, and to our minds, and to everything that we do. And we also believe that the Son of the Most High, His name is Yahushua, there were no J's in Hebrew, and so his name was Joshua with a Y, and it doesn't matter how many people have changed it. 1611, the king changed it to Jesus. Before that, it was Iesus, and a Hebrew's man would never be called that. So if we're looking for the correct name of the son of the Most High, his name is Yahushua. And if you were talking about the Christ, the Mashiach, he is Yahushua HaMashiach. And his dad's name is Yahua, and Yad Hed Vav Hed. Yad Hed Wabhev is how we do it. And people, some do it with Yehovah with a V and some do it with the W, Yahuwah or Yehovah. And um, it's still, those are probably incorrect because those are still English letters and his name was not in English. And so best we have is close to Yahuwah. So thank you guys very, very much for being out there and for hanging out here. I do not have my calendar. Let me get that set up. Okay, so today is month eight, and thank you to dear Nicole for doing this calendar, and I can actually read it, so thank you very, very much to her. Today is month eight on the Creator's calendar. It is the sixth day of the week. What does that mean, everyone? Preparation day. Preparation day. That means tomorrow is a Shabbat. What does that mean to be a preparation day today, Eli? It means that we should prepare everything that we have so we can, because we, tomorrow we do not work, we do not clean, we do not cook, we do not do anything except for rest. Right, and so tonight at sunset begins, tonight right here between this line is sunset, and it, it from sunset to sunset over here is the seventh day, and it is a kind of a nice day out there. How's everybody out there doing? Jade? Good. Kate? Good. good. Eli? Good. Everyone good? Yep. Got all the junk picked up from our adventures. Yep. That's good. That's always a plus. All right. We did the handy dandy split screen. I didn't even need a drum roll because I yacked right through it. So this is a depressing chapter. If anything, um, I would say it's very depressing. It is very sad. It is also very long. So let us figure out what we can figure out. Here we go. Matthew 26. <coughs> excuse me. And <coughs> Excuse me. Double. And it came to pass when Yahushua had finished all these things saying, he said unto his Talmudian, and so let me, I think I messed it up. When Yahushua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his Talmudian, ye know that after two days is the feast of Pekach, and the son of Adam is betrayed to be crucified. So we knew, was it last chapter he had four days before Passover? I think it was two, two chapters, chapters ago. ago. He had two days before Passover. So we are basically one day, or we are in the same day that he is going to be Basically, they come and they, they beat him up um, and and start torturing him. So he, he basically tells everybody, you know, um, I'm about to be betrayed. And so I, I, I would imagine as a human being or, or walking as a human being, you're going to start dealing with a lot of problems here, a lot of stuff. We saw that in the last chapter where he wanted to pray. Uh, or was that in this chapter? That's just chapter. Okay, I, I read forward, so I can't do it. So, okay, can't go into that discussion yet. Okay, then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Yahushua by subtility and kill him. Now, who is Caiaphas? He's, he's supposed to be a high priest, a Levitical high priest. Now, do we still have Levitical high priests at this time? Not in this age, no. Now, what about this? There when, <clears throat> this guy, there should he have been. kind of had it, but they weren't really doing what they should have been doing. Well, I would say these guys aren't really technically high priests. I mean, the problem was at this point, these people had all fallen into Babylonian Talmudic style stuff. And these were the Caiapha were along with these. These were the Pharisees and these were the Sadducees. And so they all had different religious sects within this stuff. And so Caiapha... He isn't just a a chief priest. He isn't just a priest of anything like this, right? He was a he was a, I think voted in is what they had voted this guy in, and um, so these guys are very evil people. Okay, four, and consulted that they might take Yahushua by subtility and kill him, but they said not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now, when Yahushua was in Bethany in the house of Shimon the jar maker. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat to eat. Yours says jar maker? He says jar. Mine says leper. Leper? Shimon the leper. This says jar maker. 
Um, it and does I, even KJV them. says leper. Um, so he was either a leper or a jar maker, one of the Maybe two. He was both. Maybe he was a jar maker that had leprosy. A leprous jar maker. A leprous jar maker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so eight. But when his Talmudians saw it, they had indignation, saying, "To what purpose is this waste?" For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahushua understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Now these guys, these guys are going to feel really, really bad in the next day or two or three or four or, you know, probably for a while. Um, even after Messiah is resurrected, um, because they did not understand this, right? They did not understand that the, <laughs> they, 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 she was putting this perfume on him, and she probably didn't understand why she was putting the perfume on him exactly. Um, obviously, the Ruha Kakadesh was in these people that they, they were able to understand what was going on, and she did this. Um, so this was a huge thing. This was a, a ceremony of a source, right? Is a sanctification right before you kind of die. 13. Did I do 12? Yep. Yep. When, amen, I say unto you, whosoever this besora shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, for this, that this woman has done, be told for a memorial of her. And she was, right? Here we are. We're, we're talking about this woman and her, you know, this spending all of this, this money on of this, you know, she probably saved for this ointment all of her life. She had this special jar of this stuff, and it was back in the day. That was very, very, very expensive. Probably still is today. 14. Then one of the 12, called Yahuda Ishkariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto him, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And Nicole, how much is that? Mine says about $21.60. $21.60. Uh, I gave up Yehoshua This man for $20. gave up our king. This man gave up our Messiah. A little more than a sandwich. What was it, like 10 chapters ago or something? Messiah says, what would, it, what would a person, you know, what would the cost of your soul be? How much more is it? This guy gave up his soul for $20. 20 bucks, guys. Okay, 16. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. But before the feast of Matzah drew on, the Talmudian came to Yahushua saying to him, where will you that we prepare for you to eat the Pesach? Okay, again, for all the Christians that are out there, our Messiah is keeping a Passover. He's keeping a holy feast, right? There is no new doctrine. There is no new way of salvation. There is no new way of anything. The new covenant involves a Melchizedek priest. It involves Messiah Yahushua as the perfect lamb and also our orchestrator of that as the high priest. And, um, you know, this is, this is crazy, right? He is pre He's keeping feasts. Does anyone else have anything on that? No, he's, he's doing what the Torah said and for him just to do away with it in like two days, it's kind of crazy to think yeah, about. Yeah, I was just going to go have the feast just so I can die and get rid of everything. You know, that's crazy. That's crazy. Why don't you just kick back and say, we're not celebrating this year. I'm giving away with it the next day. Yeah, it wouldn't make any sense. Why would you, if you're about to die and you're about to um, change the entire laws, why wouldn't you be the rebel right here and go, okay, we're not going to be doing this in a couple days, guys. So we're not going to do it now. So let's not waste our time, right? So you got to look at this as a, you know, with, I don't know what kind of thinking, critical thinking, critical thinking. Okay, 18. And he said, go into the city Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The rabbi says, My time is at hand. I will keep the pekach at your house with my Talmudian. And the Talmudian did as Yahushua had appointed them, and they made ready the pekach. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. Now, why would he be sitting down at even on the pekach? What's this mean? What's he doing? Yeah, that's when Passover starts, is it evening? Okay, a lot of people wouldn't understand this. So guys, go into a little bit more. Why is he celebrating? Why is he sitting down at night? Because the evening is when your feast What's the law? Start. What's the law say? For, you're going to celebrate Passover from evening to evening. Right. And so he is, they're doing this right on the appointed time. What the crazy thing is, is the next day he is going to die for us. So if we're looking at a Passover lamb that is being killed. So he's about to kill the lamb. But the next day, our lamb is about to be killed. Okay, 20. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Amen, I say unto you, 
that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Adonai, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dips his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The son of Adam goes as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the son of Adam is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Yahuda, which betrayed him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? He said unto him, you have said. So I guess at this point, I would imagine Yahuda probably ran off, right? I'm thinking he didn't stick around here, um, especially if this was all public among everyone because... The 11 would probably want to beat him. Well, they, yeah, they would all be wondering what this dude is doing. And all of a sudden, this guy would become the enemy of the state, of the people, right? They're, he's not going to be... Uh, friends of those who are not uh, giving up Messiah Yahushua. In another one of these, though, it says that Yeshua told him, go, go do what you need to do. Right, and people didn't understand it, and they did not understand because he was, they, they thought he, because he was holding the money. This guy was the money uh, holder of the of the group, and so... Um, I thought he meant, like, go to the poor, give money to the poor, or, like, go feed the poor, go yeah. find some food or something. Right, and so the, he went and went and betrayed Messiah, when, and so a lot of people, I guess they didn't actually know what was going on, but... Um, I don't know if this was a private or public part right here where he did this. Okay. Um, 26. 26. And as they were eating, Yahushua took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the Talmudian and said, take, eat, this is my body. Okay. The people will say right here, not the people, the, the actual people that do not believe in the New Testament or didn't believe in the Besor, the good news. They will say that this breaks Torah right here. Right, mm -hmm. this section right here, he's telling you to eat human body. That's not Levitical uh, food. Um, that's not Leviticus eleven. Why would he be saying this? Why did he? Why is he doing this right here? Why does he say, "Take this is my body and eat"? Uh, because it's the sacrifice. He is becoming the sacrifice, and he says, "You are going to take part in my sacrifice. You are going to become with me." Right. And so, what do we do when we cook the lamb that night? How do we do it? We cook it up on 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 the, on the giant fire. And what do we do with it? And we eat it. Eat it, yeah. And we don't leave what? We don't leave any of it until until morning. Right. If, and burn, so, if there's any left, you burn it up. Right. And so this right here essentially says, our Messiah is that lamb, right? Or he's he's explaining to everybody, this is my body. This is this is what you guys can do for salvation. He is not saying to eat me, right? He's not saying, and, and I guess. The problem is we have people that are, you know, I don't know what level of grade of reading skills they are. They claim that, you know, they, they do all this other stuff. But when they read scriptures, they read it out of context and they, they, they're they like, well, you, this is this is breaking the Torah. And then it continues on. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the renewed covenant, which is shed for the many for the remission of sins. Did you guys say renewed or new covenant? Renewed. Renewed. Okay. And says, no. NIV says this is the blood. This is my blood of the covenant. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out. And so people don't understand this is a covenant. It's the same thing with with eating our Passover lamb. It was part of the covenant. You you put door on your lentils. You eat the lamb. You will be spared from the angel of death that's coming over you. So this is the same thing. You said door on your lentils. You door on my lentil. Blood. lentil. Blood on the lentils, yeah, sorry. Go. Thanks, thank you. Good to have you back, Nicole. I, I keep messing up. Okay, um, so this is, and then he goes on, for this is my blood of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. So for those who think he was drinking blood, he, he clearly says he's drinking wine, right? Right. I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. Okay, what does that mean? That Does means that means he's not going to drink wine until we all get with him? Do you think he had wine? There might be food up in heaven. Angels might eat as well. There's a, there's absolutely food in heaven. I I I'm I am convinced there is food and drink in the Shemaim. Um, I think it's going to be better than the stuff we have here, and it won't be laden with GMOs. Okay, so um, is the the question I have is when he comes back. And he hangs out with them in Acts, or he hangs out with them, like, not an Acts. I mean, it's like, it is an Acts. Right? It is, the end, of that. end of John, I think, beginning of Acts. Did he drink here, or is this actually in the Father's kingdom, or once he dies, is the Father's kingdom plan been 
been here and uh, well, he drank we know, it then. We know he ate fish. We know he ate fish with them, So, I, yep. but it never specifically says he drank wine, but we do know he did eat, so he probably drank some water too. Yeah, so this is a very, this is a very good, interesting question, I suppose. Okay, 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Can you imagine that hymn? Those guys were singing with Messiah Yahushua. That would be just crazy to hear that. Then said Yahushua unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered abroad. And was that Isaiah? Oh, Zechariah 13, 7. 32. <clears throat> but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Kepha answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. Yahushua said unto him, Amen. I say unto you, that this night before the cock crow, you shall deny me thrice. Kepha said unto him, Though I should die with you, yet will I not deny you. Likewise also said all the Talmudian. Then came Yahushua unto them, with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the Talmudian, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Kepha and the two sons of Zavadee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Who are the two sons of Zavadee? Uh, John and Jacob. So he had with him John, Jacob, and Peter, right? Right. And so he's all hanging out. Those with, are the three that are usually with him. Yeah, those are the three. That, like his biggest, like his right-hand men, I think. Yeah, I agree. 38. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. This is, this is a, a crazy thing, right? That our Messiah is so worried even to death. I mean, people say it all the time, I'm worried to death. He's human. He's, he has problems too. He has, he has stress about this too. I mean, he, he's going in to literally willingly die for the people. And as a human, that's something scary, right? You're losing your life. And he was human just like the rest of us. That's why I think it was so such a wonderful thing that he walked the Torah and lived the Torah just to prove that we can do it as well because he wasn't a special entity. He wasn't a special powers of a person. He was just a regular human that was blessed by Yah. I would have to say he has special powers, but I say that he still has human issues. Like we have human issues. He gets hungry, he gets thirsty, he gets tired, he gets, you know, all of this stuff. And um, he did have special powers. I mean, he does have the Ruha Kakadesh, but... I don't, I don't believe Yah would have allowed him to be different than humans in the form of suffering because I think that was the whole point of this whole stuff is that we can, as human beings, even though they are not human entities, they, our creator's son was able to walk it as his father had designed and made it happen. Okay, 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Again, that's a Trinity buster, right? It's again, Mo, my father. This man would be insane if he's sitting here talking to himself as another person, right? He says, my father, it's his will, but not, it's not my will, but it's my father's will. Very important we understand this. 40, and he came unto the Talmudian and found them asleep and said unto Kepha, what could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Ruach indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then came he to his Talmudian and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the son of Adam is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that betrays me. And while he yet spoke, lo, Yahuda, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave him them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss... The same as he, hold him fast. And there's the Judas kiss. And forthwith he came to Yahushua and said, Hail Adonai, and kissed him. And Yahushua said unto him, Friend, wherefore are you come? Then they came and laid hands on Yahushua and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahushua stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then Yahushua said unto him, Put up your sword, put up again your sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. 
Think you that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? And how what do we know of as 12 legions of angels? I think uh, like legions like 10,000. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, I think it was 12,000. Mine legion. says more than 80,000. Angels? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so 12. I feel like he only needed like four or five angels to really handle Yeah, I don't guys. think he needed them. Yeah. He, I think one angel would Legions of angels would destroy everything. Okay. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In that same hour said Yahushua to the multitudes, are ye come out against as a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the Talmudian forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hold on Yahushua led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Kepha followed him far, afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in, and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Yahushua to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of Elohim and to build it in, build it in three days. Now, what, what did he actually say? He said the... the uh um, temple of Elohim will be broken down and he will be rebuilt in three days. Yeah, did he say he's going to destroy the temple? No. No, no, they are. He, yeah, they said that. So that's these guys were liars. And so... Um, false witnesses. Yeah, again, more false witnesses. Liars. I bet they're like really regretting these decisions nowadays. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer you nothing? What is it which these witnesses against you? But Yahushua held his peace and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure you by the living El that you tell us whether you be Hamashiach, the son of Elohim. Okay, so here it is again, the Trinity Buster, right? Over and over and over again. Is our Mashiach a filthy liar, right? No. Is he a liar? No. Yahushua said unto him, you have said, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the son of Adam sitting in the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Okay, who's if he's sitting on the right hand, who is at the main? Yahuwah. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> that's the thing people don't get. And the Catholics literally will tell you that Yahuwah recreated himself as himself, called himself his son, and his son that is not his real son, but is actually him, is seated on the right hand of the throne. Can you imagine this? A lot of work goes into that. It's just, it's insane. And that is literally what their doctrine says. I think it'd be easier to have a son and call him son. Or why lie to us? If you're telling us, number one, your weights and measurements must be right. You don't want to be a liar. Liars will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. All of a sudden, the guy that's telling us this is a filthy liar. We've been tricked and deceived. That sounds insane. 65. Then the high priest rent his clothes saying, he has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard this blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Then they did spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. What does your guy say for buffeted him? They beat him. Slapped him. Mine says he was struck with fists and some slapped him. Wow. You can you imagine doing that to the son of the Most High? Crazy. Okay, um, they said, saying, 68, prophesy unto us, Mashiach, who is that he that smote you? Now Kepha sat without in, the, without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, you also were with Yahushua of Galil. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what you say. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Yahushua the Natsri. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Kepha, surely you are the one, you are one of them for your speech betrays you. And yours to say, be raised is an interesting word. Give you your accent gives you away. Yeah, be raised thee um, is how the king says it. 74, then began he to curse and to swear saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Kepha remembered the word of Yahushua, which said unto him before the cock crow, you shall deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. So um, I guess there, there's, our, there's our, the man Kepha, right? There's, Kepha got scared. 
Um, a lot of us possibly in the world is going to have the same stuff. We can all take up our Bibles. We can take up our swords and our, our, our armor. And we can say, we will never deny Messiah. We will never deny Yahuwah. We will never do it. We will stand firm. You had a man who walked with Messiah for years and years. On the night of his death, loyal as he was, he said, I will not deny you. And he denied him. Does that say anything bad about Kepha? No. That's saying about human experience, that it is not too hard to scare the humans. When our lives are on the line and they saw the leader, his leader was taken up and was beaten in front of him, was in a, a room. You could hear them probably slapping him. And he didn't want any part of that. He's like, oh man, they, this, is, this isn't what it is. His faith wavered, right? If you truly believe that he was the son of the most high, your faith wouldn't waver. And so he was still dealing with some faith issues. His faith was still wavering. And so if, if this happened to Kepha, I promise you guys, everyone out there, this can happen to you. So this is where we need to not be worried about our physical bodies. We need to understand that from dust we came and dust we will go. We're not going to make it out of this alive, nor, nor are we guaranteed this. And we shouldn't. The human endeavor is simply a test. It is simply a time. It's a resume. We have 120 years to get right with our creator. He says we have 120 years for repentance. So in this years that we are out here, are we repenting? Are we getting on our hands and knees? Are we finding the faith of Messiah Yahushua? Are we getting the Torah into our life, into our family's lives, into our souls, everything? Or are we just going about it? Are we flipping on the TV, watching HBO? Or are we flipping on the video game console and playing video games? Are we, are we losing track of the kingdom to come? Because the kingdom will come in a moment that we do not know. Like a thief in the night, like a bolt of lightning from the east to the west, it will come. And those who are not ready are going to be sitting there knocking on the door of the people who have oil in their lamps. And if you don't have oil in your lamps, if you do not have the Torah in your life, you do not have oil oil you're going to be you're going to be in darkness and you, our messiah the bride is going to come and we're not the bridegroom will come we will not be ready we will not be ready and so this is a a request that we all all of us as a people as a family a big large family that we seek our creator where he's able to be found we seek the kingdom where it is able to be found and bring this into our lives so with that i believe i've Gone on my soapbox long enough. Anyone else? Uh, tomorrow is Shabbat. Get yes. everything prepared today for those that are new. Just Yes, and we are doing the live Shabbat on the same time we did it last week. So for those of you who were an hour early, we are super, super sorry. We probably didn't get the message out. We are, we are one hour later than we were several weeks ago. So we, we just bumped it up <clears throat> one extra hour trying to get a couple other folks in. And hopefully you guys can join us. We uh, have a very fun Ecclesia. For the most part, uh, it, uh, the nature works out well for us, and hopefully it'll work out tomorrow. No hurricanes on the horizon. And with that, I hope you guys... Hopefully our internet doesn't die again. Yeah, hopefully our internet doesn't die again, and we have to deal with things of this nature. Hasatan is always trying to stop the message from getting out, and we are always continuing on with everything we can do. So thank you guys very, very much for being part of our family, for being a part of this Ecclesia, and I hope you have a wonderful preparation day, and we will see you tomorrow on Shabbat. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.